Hello, and welcome to our Wellness Ambassadors at Work interview series, hosted by myself, Lisa Kelly of Kelly Wellness Consulting, Inc., and founder of the Workplace Wellness Ambassador Certification Programs. In this series, we interview our KWC certified Workplace Wellness Ambassadors, along with other industry guests from across the globe, to learn about their perspectives and achievements in creating healthy, thriving organizations. We hope this series will inspire you, our viewer, to do your part, perhaps, in cultivating cultures of health and well-being at your own workplace, or maybe with other organizations you may work with as an independent coach or consultant. I'm honored today to be joined by one of our master ambassadors, Sabrina Gondar, and Sabrina recently certified with us in our most recent program. So welcome, Sabrina, to our Wellness Ambassadors at Work interview series. Thank you. So Sabrina, we're going to just jump right into things now. And um, I'm going to have you introduce to our, our viewers a little bit about yourself and probably speak to, as we've discussed earlier, a little bit about your wellness coaching background. And I know you're an active consultant in workplace wellness and what your goals and aspirations are for consulting and probably even touch on, you know, how you're moving forward um, with your new skill development from our program. Sure, great. Um, so my background was, um, prior to doing some other administrative things, was I ran a retirement community for over 12 years and always looking at ways to get the seniors healthier and to remain independent. And from there, I went to manage a physical therapy clinic that had physical, occupational, and massage therapy. And I really saw some cool changes, but I, I, I knew I didn't want to be any of those disciplines. So I was trying to figure out what I could do in the health and wellness arena that wasn't those disciplines. So then I got into corporate wellness even prior to having formal training and traveled quite a bit and saw the need for accountability and for what to eat and when to eat and how to eat because there's so much information out there. Mm -hmm. And so went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and just loved the programming so much that I decided to start my own business. Mm -hmm. And so I have my own personal um, coaching business. And then about a year and a half ago, joined with another gal and have a corporate wellness company as well. So okay. I get to work with small and large companies and individuals and just really um, appreciate the need for this information to get out and into the workplace. Right. And so from, you know, the work you've been doing and so how long have you been health coaching per se? Um, almost three years now. Okay. You've been in the workplace wellness field, you say about a year and a half? Um, yeah, but formally how you, half. <laughs> yeah, how would you define the difference, say, for those who are viewing who may be health coaches and thinking about getting into workplace wellness consulting or coaching, what would you say are some of the defining differences between the two of those, uh, you know, sectors? Great question. Uh, time for one, you mm -hmm. have less time or more of a group session time when you're in the corporate realm mm -hmm. versus one on one. <laughs> so that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, it's more general information delivery generally than being really specific because when you're one on one with somebody, you can really dive into their specific issue and concern versus being more global in your information. Yeah. And what would you say are some things that really keep you motivated and passionate about, passionate about your work as a consultant in the workplace wellness since you've been in that field for the past year and a half? The changes are so rewarding and motivating. So when you see somebody who just simply starts drinking water mm -hmm. and starts dropping weight and feeling better and sleeping better. So those small changes that anybody can do and the big reward. Right. And I guess as we often talk about in workplace wellness consulting, that that translates often into, um, you know, a more energized, vibrant, a thriving organization, you know, because their employers are healthier and they're fitter, right? Absolutely. And, um, so any other, any other thoughts that come to mind then, you know, um, feedback you've gotten from employers or employees on the difference you've made as a workplace wellness consultant? 
Yes, great question. They're seeing absenteeism go down. They're seeing that energy that you spoke about, higher level of energy. One of the really cool things that I see is um, each person within a department helping their coworker out. So there's this more cohesive, synergistic teamwork happening within the company. So the culture starts to shift. For sure. And do you work with committees or advisory groups in any of the organizations? In one, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. How's that dynamic as opposed to, no, because I, I really encourage our ambassadors. I said, you know, it's really hard to be everything to everybody and try not to be doing all the tactical, but be a lead consultant or coach to the employer and work you know, with your advisory group to do the more tactical things. Is that a strategy you take with, you know, your group? <clears throat> of that group, there's really one person that's the pivotal person. So mm -hmm. it does help in that there's um, discussion and mm -hmm. those other folks are actually in the trenches, if you will. So they, mm -hmm. they're they hearing what people like, what people would like different, mm -hmm. how it can be improved. And they often are sharing with Again, those that they come in contact with about, maybe we call them rounds. So the next round of wellness that we're offering within the workplace. Right, exactly. And for yourself, I mean, there's so many questions I want to ask. And we have so lim limited time to do it, but perhaps in another interview. But, but um, you know, how do you discern the needs and interests? So we talk about in our training program, obviously, doing the organizational audit, the workplace wellness audit, and the employee needs and interests. And so is that... A strategy you take when you first engage with a, an employer client? Absolutely. Yeah, finding out what they know the needs are, and we kind of refer to it as a low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. trying to get those uh, people and those issues that are <clears throat> simple and um, <coughs> doable in a brief amount of time addressed and right. then then advance from there. Right, right. And do you find, um, and as we talked about before, I mean, certainly don't give away any trade secrets here as a consultant, but um, you know, do clients or employers tend to hire you for one ofs, or do you find there's interest in having you for longer term contracts? And again, just speak to what you're comfortable in sharing there. Yeah, both. So I've received clients one-on-one -on -one from mm -hmm. the program. Mm -hmm. And then we have started with one particular company, what we call the alumni group. Mm -hmm. So once they've gone through our, ours is a 14 week program. Okay. So once they've graduated from that program, then we go in once a month and we do some sort of um, refresher. Okay. Yeah. Maintenance is a good word too. Mm -hmm. Building on that information because that momentum is there so we don't want to lose that momentum absolutely i'm so i'm thrilled i'm actually so pleased to hear that and i haven't talked to you before about that in our program so i'm really delighted to, to hear that you know a you're doing that and b that there's interest in 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 that as well um have you done any virtual work yet we talk a lot about that in our program we're going to get to that in a minute but have you had that opportunity yet to do any virtual delivery to other employers outside of your local area i haven't yet i that's exactly the direction i'm going with mm -hmm. my personal coaching okay. uh, to leverage my time because mm -hmm. as you know <laughs> the more you add to your plate the more you need to leverage so i think that is the future mm -hmm. of we are offering and what people are going to be looking for and demanding so I'm excited to and talk about synergy and I mean as you've seen in our program we bring participants from all areas of the globe literally from Dubai to Australia to the UK to Canada to US um, Nigeria and um, you know it, it, the sharing is just phenomenal I think you would agree right and and how everything comes together and we learn best practices from other countries and other states um, and so to that end, uh, you know, I guess, as you just said, I mean, I think there's really a tremendous value in bringing even employees together from different companies. And that's another approach, right, that we coach to our clients. And that might be something, you know, yourself that you might even want to think about in the future for sure. So speaking of that, like, you know, that's a good segue into my next question was how do you feel? Feel that the program training you know we do a lot with virtual technology through zoom which is the platform we're using here for our webinars we use um, Basecamp we use Rizuku for e-learning and a whole host of other virtual technologies so not only do our trainees our ambassadors get training in obviously you know substantial workplace wellness theories or not even so much theories we give them very applied and hands-on right because you do projects and everything as a group but, but succinctly then, like, how do you feel the virtual training and technology in all those tools has really prepared you 
to do what you said you're interested in doing is, is reaching out more globally with your services. I was not aware of any of those platforms before coming to your program, mm -hmm. Lisa. So hugely helpful and important. And in fact, we've incorporated Basecamp in our corporate wellness program. Oh, excellent. We're all using that. And it's such a great way to stay in touch and know who's doing what, when, and try to catch any Thing that might fall through the cracks because email is a great tool but base camp just does so much more for yes. what we're doing yeah and it's such a great repository i just love it we use it as you know in our program and you know as i often say in these interviews the world really is your oyster and with virtual technology there is no limit there's no stopping you to where you can go with your services and and i wanted to ask you earlier too um, do you pick up any private health coaching clients from your corporate work? And is that something maybe that you're even looking for? Or? I do. It's not my focus, certainly. My focus is to, to serve them in that capacity and in that time. However, people have inquired and they have hired me outside of the corporate okay. work. Okay. Yeah. And so for anyone, yeah, I was just thinking that for anyone of either in our program or coming into our program or interested in certifying with us, that, um, you know, it is another... I would think a, a, a lucrative way to, to build up your clientele as well through your exposure to companies, right? Definitely. And we, we get that pre-approved from the corporation. For sure. Yes. You'd have obviously the logistics of that you'd have to pre pre-arrange. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, moving into a little bit more about um, your consulting strategies. And again, please just share what you, what you're comfortable in sharing. But as a consultant, because I know this is an area that um, our current trainees, and we provide a lot of marketing support, as you know, through our mastermind sessions, and we give extensive marketing toolkits with bios and, um, you know, rack cards and brochures that you can customize. And so everything's pretty well done for you in our program. It's really a turnkey, as they say, and hit the ground running. But, but coming back to my question, like, what do you feel are the best practices that you've experienced and seen others in the industry as far as positioning yourself and marketing yourself as a workplace wellness ambassador slash consultant coach? Um, and, you know, what's really worked well for you in um, getting yourself known in the community and, and obviously then securing contracts with employers? Sure. So those tools are all very valuable and lend itself to many different ways to communicate. And as I was sharing with you earlier, communication is just critical and something that can always be improved upon. So all those tools help to get the information out there. And even though the school I attended is over 25 years old, there's still a lot of people that don't either know what a health coach is or understand what health coaches can do. So we do a lot of education and the way we do that and get clients corporately is to be in the community. So whether that's a, a chamber event or a networking event, and once you present that to the employer and say, are you having struggles with your employees in this realm? And they're nodding their heads, yes, they're missing a lot of work, or they're sick all the time, or they're stressed, or whatever. And you present some tools and suggestions, they're very interested in knowing more and looking and at that. Them. Exactly, and that would probably help just sell yourself right there, right? And um, interestingly, too, we use the term a lot, presenteeism today in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just someone was just yesterday asking me what that term meant, so I explained it. And so is that something that employers are using the verbiage of or, or describe that, yeah, my employees are showing up, but they're not showing up? You know, they're not giving, they're not bringing their best selves to work. They're not producing the way they could be or presenteeism, I think, also can take into fact that maybe there's lost time because people are surfing social media. I don't know. You know, there's a whole bunch of other areas. So just a few of those areas I've touched on, do they come up in your work with your employers? They do, and I don't think, the employers are as familiar with that term as we are in the industry. I think it's more industry jargon as far as at this point. But mm -hmm. when you mention that and frame it just the way you did and say, well, do you have people showing up? They're physically there, but they're not mentally there. You get a lot of head nodding and, and frustration because they don't, they want that employee, but they want them present. So once you reframe it and explain it, they understand that, yeah, they've got a problem with that and they would like some help. 
Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted, you know, and, and I'm sure that's something that obviously you probably very much address in your presentations to chambers of commerce and whomever. Um, any other marketing strategies or best practices that you think that come to mind that you could share with our viewers that has really helped aside from the community work? Do you, you know, do any social media connections through LinkedIn or anything of that sort? I do. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I have a Twitter account. <clears throat> um, some of those are dual for my business and my um, corporate wellness business. Some of them aren't. I really get a lot of people I find later that are tracking me on Facebook and will reach out when the time is right for right. help. So that's always interesting to me to tell people will say, oh, I've been reading your stuff for a year and now, now I need what you have to offer. And isn't that so true? And I say that to our trainees that sometimes things just do not happen overnight, right? I mean, you know, I, I was working on a government contract sometimes for about a half a year before it finally materialized and I got the contract. And, and that's just the way it is. And it's a little bit of a different field, obviously, than marketing yourself for private health coaching. But it's, it's so rewarding. And there's challenges. But for those who like a challenge, then, you know, it, it's, it's just so, so rewarding. So rewarding. And um, so, um, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of the social media and the LinkedIn, um, you know, how else has that helped you? Um, do you? Do you write blogs, for example? And do you no, I don't. I don't currently. <clears throat> and I think having a schedule for all of those tools is the best way to approach it. And so I need to be more consistent with that. Yeah. So but yeah, I, um, I have a newsletter that I've produced and I love the materials that you've provided through the program. Those have been great. And I usually pick a topic once a month and kind of talk around that, whether it's coconut oil or turmeric or stress or sleep right. or whatever. Right. For sure. And, um, you mentioned also that you have associates that work with your business through. I do. Yeah. I do. And how does that dynamic work? Because a number of, um, you know, some of our master ambassadors are just starting to uh, partner up with other people they've met in the program to do virtual work. And then interestingly enough, some of our masters found out they're living in the same, you know, proximity so they can partner together. And so um, how many people do you work with if you don't mind sharing and, and how does that, how does that work for you? Not at all. So the smaller companies, it's myself. The larger companies, it's a team of four. Mm -hmm. And I really like the team dynamic. I, I do well on my own, but I really like collaborating with, with others. And it's mm -hmm. very rewarding. And you start to get different perspectives and have different ideas that come out of all that sharing and working together. So yeah. I feel like I have the best of both worlds. Right. And so would you go in and co-present or co-deliver a workshop or a lunch and learn or a campaign of some sort? Typically I would do the presenting, but there's other aspects like I have a physical therapy okay. or excuse me, a, a personal trainer. Sorry, my old world. Um, we have a personal trainer that's on our team and then I have another health coach on the team. And then the other owner is a chiropractor. Oh, so interesting. Then, that background is and they all have their own i would think individual businesses but you collaborate and come together as associates i would think to serve maybe the larger contracts that you're working exactly. on right? exactly. and then that brings to mind then um so aside from you know helping i assume you go in and help do some strategic planning and workplace wellness with them as well around you know framing out a, a year-long plan do you do that approach with them in some cases we do as as best we can. Um, the team that we work with, most of them are volunteers, so they're they're there um, for multiple reasons, whether it be personal reasons mm -hmm. and or they want to see a more healthy environment. So when we meet, it's usually dealing with what's current versus projecting out an entire year. So we probably project out about six months. At okay, this. well, that's good. I mean, that's good, and, and for sure. And I know like one of our other ambassadors, as you know, um, she's a workplace wellness concierge, um, another industry term we use, which is basically, you know, an independent consultant to a company. And um, she does that as well, works with an advisory team yeah, probably every quarter or so and helps them map out strategies and does work with them every week. And then the other question I wanted to ask you was, um, do you provide one-on-one -on -one health coaching then to employees? Is that a level of service that employers are looking from you for? It is, and they do. I think there's a lot of power in the group session. Mm -hmm. 
Um, however, what we're able to do are brief one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if somebody has something really personal and what we've had happen every single round that we call is we've had people that are dealing with really heavy stuff. They're mm -hmm. diagnosed with cancer. They're losing a mother, a father, mm -hmm. a child. And so helping them through that process. And that's when you shift from whatever it was that you had on your agenda to meeting them with what they need in that right. moment. And I would think too, as we talk about in our program, you know, re respecting our scope and our boundaries and professional practice, um, I would think there's probably areas too where maybe you might refer out to an EAP program or something, right? And Absolutely. Yeah, and, that, and that's the beauty, like we can be a nice bridge for the areas that, you know, do require more intensive coaching outside of our scope of practice, then we're a nice conduit, I would think, too, to the EAP programs, right? Definitely. Yeah. So this has just been fantastic. Um, I just want to end off another couple of questions, and we'll conclude. But um, what are your thoughts and on how our post-program support is? Um, you know, we, we offer um, three mastermind sessions, and we've had two already that you've participated in, and, and our, our Facebook, which we have daily support and contact and networking and from all our different programs. And um, how has that, how has that post-program support supported you as your, in your work as a consultant? Yeah, great. I'm so grateful to you, Lisa, that you oh, do as you. much as you do. You you really, truly do. You don't charge nearly enough for your program. <laughs> well, our prices are going up, <laughs> but anyway. They should, as they should. So to know that there's that support out there is really valuable, and it's there when you need it. It's not pushed upon you. So if if you're you're good and you don't need any help, then that's fine but if you're there and you want somebody's opinion whether it's on an image or a slogan or whatever it's nice to know because as an entrepreneur you can feel pretty lonely mm -hmm. you feel like you're on an island sometimes so it's really nice to have that yeah and I really want to yeah and I really want to thank you for that and I really want to add to that it's not just myself or my other associates that help I mean it's 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 the collaboration and the team support and I call ourselves an ambassador family because I really feel that we are like everyone is so supportive of each other I know myself if I need feedback on a design I'll just pop it in Facebook and literally within 20 minutes I've got feedback I have my own little focus group I mean it's phenomenal as as do each of you right so I mean you know that's just some of the many many benefits and I I'm just so passionate to get to do what I do and have to work with people like yourself and and I really I really thank you for that um, anything else that you want to add before we conclude I just think if anybody's looking at going into corporate wellness, they need to take this program. There oh, are you. endless numbers of tools and resources and the connections that will support you through this process because it's in the beginning, it's, it's a lot to navigate. And I was fortunate that I'd already been working in it to some degree before coming into the program, but it's just added a lot of additional resources and and other tools and ideas that I yeah. and I really thank you for sharing that as well because I really try and market and try and encourage obviously people who are already experienced and in the field because I just see and I've had a number of experienced uh, workplace wellness coordinators and independent consultants like yourself who thought oh my heavens I didn't realize how much more there was to learn or the, the value in working with teams like this or which we haven't talked about I mean the group project that you worked in right and the campaign project and then to get all everyone's campaigns on the end and then campaigns from past programs in our database and future campaigns that you don't even know you're getting yet you know you'll know they're coming at next point but um and then in our new program which i don't know if you know this in our new level one leading up to the master level you're going to also start getting lunch and learn campaigns as well great so yeah and so um you're going to get lunch and learns you know so you're going to have full lunch and learns. so you're going to after our first program, um, you know, after our February program, you'll probably get upwards of 10 lunch and learns that you can use. Fantastic. And you'll get them every subsequent program because you're going to, as masters, you'll get the lunch and learn database and the workplace wellness campaign database. So just kind of let the cat out of the bag there. But um, yeah, so that's something to look forward to. So thank you so much, Sabrina. Um, I really, I really, really did enjoy our interview today. And I really appreciate your participating in our interview series, and it's really been quite an honor. <clears throat> so thank you to our viewer for joining us. If you're interested in learning more about our Workplace Wellness Ambassador certification programs, please visit us at kellywc.com, or certainly contact me at info at kellywc.com. 
And also be sure to watch our additional KWC interviews on our Kelly Wellness Consulting YouTube channel. Till we meet again, stay healthy, stay well, and as always, live your best life. Take care, everyone.